In my previous video, I discussed about the loss of jobs and the threat of AI to human society. If AI was going to replace human jobs and businesses continue to invest in AI technologies and robots, what could be the future for AI then? Hey, Hans here. Cebu Pacific recently announced that they are dropping all call center operations in efforts to speed up its digital transformation and improve overall customer experience. They are replacing what used to be their huge customer or call center into Cebu Pacific's first online traveling assistant named Charlie. The marketing president of Cebu Pacific said in an interview, quote, we are glad to have started our first digital transformation journey even before the pandemic because we have come to rely on it in its new normal environment. Charlie the AI isn't actually new. In fact, it has been around since 2018, but due to its lack of updates and features back then, it was not possible to fully replace humans. Today, however, that changes because the self-learning AI has gathered enough data for three years from different customer complaints, you know, solutions and flight data, including weather conditions, no-show factors, and other minor details. It is estimated to have learned around over 22 million lines of new code during the course of three years, further polishing its intelligence, memory, and emotional connection. This means that there will be more unemployed folks, less people generating income for their families, and less potential customers for businesses, which is not a good situation for our economy. By setting an example, Cebu Pacific could have just given rise to more companies cutting costs and replacing humans with AI. The only problem with this transition is that if there are less people who have money, then there will be less people who will buy products or avail of company services. Think about it. Less workers, less customers. I certainly thought that it will take years before this massive transition to AI will affect the Philippines. I didn't think that it would have its first roots in 2021. But since it's here, I'd like to hope that employees could still have enough time to find a suitable replacement job before that time comes. It's going to be a good five years before most humans will be replaced by AI. I'd like to hope that there will be no families crying and starving during this great reset or transition. But here's the thing. The concept of robots replacing human jobs has been around since the 1900s. This was of course mainly because of the internet and the rise of small programmable electronics. Therefore, the fear of the loss of available jobs will ultimately lead to a dysfunctional economy. Take this scenario. Apple will reach a point in the year 2029 where they could triple their iPhone production into 8 billion units to accommodate at least one iPhone per human on both Earth and Mars. But no one can buy it because of the fact that most people have no jobs and all jobs have been totally replaced by AI. I mean, it doesn't matter how productive you are. If no one wants or could buy your product or service, what's the point? To solve such a scenario, an economic proposal was made back in 1940. People back then were extremely focused. They didn't have TikTok. The proposal's aim is to have a stable income for everyone, regardless of their social status or race or age, and whether you are working or not. And for the age, it was mentioned that you should be at least 18, just so you don't go buying boxes full of pop tarts. The proposal was called the Universal Basic Income. In a nutshell, Universal Basic Income or UBI is a form of welfare but hasn't really been given enough time and attention mainly because existing systems for social welfare and development or DSWD has been in place for literally centuries and no one gave a serious thought about it or at least not until during the pandemic. The goal was to try to lift more citizens out of the poverty line by ensuring that they have a fixed income for their basic needs and a bit of extra money for extra stuff. Wait, but don't we have welfare and other programs like that already? No, we don't. We have welfare. Yes, and some private industries try to donate and help with stuff like scholarships and supporting cause benefits. But for many of these, there are often contracts that you need to fulfill, like working a set of number of hours for a company in exchange for a student loan or 
maybe registering as a disabled person to avail a social welfare financial assistance. Which means that if you attempt to better your situation by maybe getting a home-based job, you risk losing your financial assistance if you get caught. What I'm trying to say is financial help often comes with strings attached. UBI does not have any strings attached. There's no contract that you're obliged to fulfill. UBI is actually giving people basic supply of money and letting them spend it on whatever they wish. Let me ask you this. If you were given free money, say 100,000 per month, would you still work for money? Or would you give up your job and focus on what you are really passionate about? Choose a different school or move away from the city and you know, avoid that congestion of humans and population and go back home to the province. What would you do? Pause this video and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Studies in the US per capita shows a shocking average for every dollar that is given to people below the poverty line. The GDP earns $1.20. Now I know it's not that much, but think of it in the scale of millions or billions of people. Increasing the number of consumers will result in a more stable economic structure because more people can buy and more people will buy, increasing the trade volume. The more money is flowing, the more taxes the government takes, so the more improvements the government can make for the development of the country. Not to mention the happiness of the people in the small scale. Applicants no longer need to accept the first job offer and can focus on waiting and finding for a new job that fits them or a career that they could create for themselves. Career takes a lot of time and effort and can often be a reason for stress if you don't love what you do. You need that job and you need that career promotion for a higher salary. Artists can also support their own craft and not worry about sales or stressful marketing. For students, they can actually focus on planning what they truly want to become. Time is crucial, and it's not like money that you can spend and sometimes get back. You know, time, once you spend it, it's spent, it's gone, done, finished. You can't get those years back and put an interest rate for those earnings. In 2018, Finland has chosen 2,000 random participants in their country and ran the experiment of the universal basic income with 560 euros fixed income per month, which was something that has never been done before. The study was conducted one year from January 2018 to January 2019. They told the participants that they could use the money and spend it on whatever they want. But will people stop working? This very question was studied in great depth in the 1970s by the US government, right about the time that they were studying UFOs. Coincidence? It was called the Guaranteed Annual Income, or GAI, and it was the goal of President Nixon. They even eventually successfully passed the bill, and the results in Seattle and Denver revealed that surprisingly, hardly anyone actually stopped working. Instead, they just adjusted their working hours very slightly, with men to reduce the least number of hours of about an average of 8%. This was the 1970s. Fast forward to 2013, a study by the World Health Organization revealed that people actually spend more on bettering their situation by purchasing tools or funding for education needs or investing in savings accounts. In fact, if a person is either too poor or too rich, is the point that they start to explore vices like beer and gambling and different reasons. The study found significant improvements in the happiness and lifestyle of these citizens, while simultaneously creating and increasing the productivity of businesses associated with some of the participants who had jobs. Now, this was a short experiment of one year, which isn't really very conclusive to the long-term effects of the system if you think about it. Longer durations might be conducted in the future. You would behave differently if you were told that the free money was going to last forever compared to if you were you know just told that the free money would only last for about a year in the case of the participants in finland most of them still kept their jobs because they know that the free money was just an experiment and was only going to last for about a year had it been a different scenario where it would be a permanent and not just an experiment people might have behaved differently again there's no way to know unless they do the experiment again UBI may also have its own downsides, depending on how you view it. Well, obviously, you can no longer brag about your new expensive shoes since everyone's going to be able to afford that anyway, so your appetite for reactions and likes isn't very likely at all. Not to add the fact that Instagram is already removing the number of likes from the app. 
But seriously, many argue that it might incentivize laziness because people would no longer work for money. The only problem is if we put it that way, it might sound unfair to some people because many people, you know, think of work as giving their life meaning, a sense of fairness to the world as life was given to them so they have to work for it. Some even find it excruciatingly disgusting to think that work isn't a need for survival and thinking about it makes them vomit. Work is an opportunity to contribute to society, creating a legacy for some. Humans build long-lasting friendships with workmates, and there are other folks who go to work just to be able to escape the loneliness of being the sole survivor of, say, a tragedy. Fulfillment is also being able to keep your achievement, awards, trophies, your name on the game, or even ancestral legacies. And money is not one of them because it's the only achievement you don't get to keep. It's, you have to spend it. It's just, if you don't spend it, it's just paper. So, you know, what's the point? Don't you hate money? It affects many decisions in your life, like who you want to become or how you want to become who you want to become. All those years of pain and suffering and fights for a piece of printed paper. I can't help but think back, what if I wasn't working for paper? The freedom itself to buy what you want isn't freedom at all. Every food you eat eats up money. Every shoes you tie is tied to money. Every game you play puts money in play. Every lifestyle you build builds on money. UBI could really just remove the stress on everything. For once, we can finally focus on what we really want to do or contribute to humanity without factoring the finances. Yesterday, Canada created the first basic income bill, C273, also called UBWorks. This has gained traction in the trending tabs of many news sources lately, and the idea is gaining momentum in many locations. This is the reason why they are so confident, involving 4,000 people revealing how people kept working and even got healthier over time. In Stockton, California, another UBI experiment with 125 people used the $500 they received each month for food, utility, and clothing. On average, 40% of the funds went to food and 24% went to clothing and merchandise and 11% on utility bills. They spent the remainder on the car maintenance, medical expenses, insurance, education, self-care, and even donations. Donations, folks. Would you believe that? One of the countries that first implemented this was the Philippines, which was a cash assistance program. Countries also like China and Japan introduced direct cash transfers to its citizens. In Europe, there was also a petition that was called the Emergency Basic Income, which kind of means the same thing, and it gathered more than 200,000 signatures. There were even surveys that reported widespread support in favor of it. In May of 2020, Spain introduced the first minimum basic income to minimize the spike of poverty that was created by the pandemic. This project would be expected to continue up to the year 2029. In August of the same year, there was an experimental project in Germany that started giving away 1,200 euros of a monthly basic income which roughly translates to about 50 to 60,000 in Philippine currency to people who did not receive the basic income. This was also followed by another experiment in New York in October of that year through the Humanity Forward Foundation which gave $500 monthly basic income to 25 residents which will last for five years and will be compared to the people who did not receive a basic income, which they call the control group. In case you're wondering, the science experiments control group is where you can compare the results of your experiment, because otherwise you wouldn't know if the experiment worked or not. So, we've come to the last part of the video and I'd like to focus more on how this situation could affect artists and content creators like you and me, and whether or not we should get all too excited about it. Pope Francis said, quote, this may be the time to consider a universal basic wage which would acknowledge and dignify the noble tasks that you carry out. What he means by dignified noble tasks is if we consider implementing UBI, then it would put dignity in the tasks that we do since we are no longer working for the money but rather we just have chosen to work in what we really want to do. Creating that sense of dignity and fulfillment, leaving what we hate and choosing what we love. The question is, can we afford it as a society? Many argue that by completely removing the welfare, 
Those extra funds that were previously budgeted for welfare could also be used to give everyone a universal basic income. The transition would not be smooth, but it shouldn't be rough either, especially for those who are currently depending on social welfare itself. Rollouts of the new UBI system must be carried out over a course of two to three months, and both experiments in Finland and China, including the projects of Germany and Spain, are great examples of that. Poverty rate among Filipino families fell from 17.9 in 2015 to 12.1% in 2018, which is good. But still, this percentage translates to around 2.9 families or 2.9 million families who are below the poverty line, which is kind of sad. A basic income could just lift these families, let them take part in the society and enjoy being a true Filipino citizen. Are you ready for the UBI? Thanks for watching.